Is the selfish gene theory gloriously and utterly wrong? Could it be that one of the most celebrated scientific books of the 20th century got it completely wrong? In 1976, Richard Dawkins, an eminent evolutionary biologist, penned The Selfish Gene. And in 2017, The Selfish Gene topped a public poll of the most inspiring science books of all time, with Bill Bryson's book A Short History of Nearly Everything in second place, and with Charles Darwin's 1859 classic On the Origin of Species in third place. Yet, beneath these accolades for Dawkins' book, a storm was brewing. In 2013, in an article titled Die, Selfish Gene, Die, it is stated, the selfish gene is one of the most successful science metaphors ever invented. Unfortunately, it's wrong. In his magnificent book, The Selfish Gene, Dawkins gathered all the threads of the modern synthesis, Mendel, Fisher, Haldane, Wright, Watson, Crick, Hamilton, and Williams, into a single shimmering magic carpet called The Selfish Gene. Unfortunately, say Ray, West Eberhard, and others, it's wrong. As Dennis Noble, president of the International Union of Physiological Sciences, stated, the modern synthesis, sometimes called neo-Darwinism, was popularized in the book by Richard Dawkins, The Selfish Gene, in 1976. Yet, as Dr. Nobel further stated after listing the various assumptions and or rules underpinning the modern synthesis, all these rules have been broken. The main fallacy? the belief that DNA is the blueprint for an organism, and that mutations in the DNA can therefore determine the organism's basic biological form. In stark contradiction to this belief, it's now widely recognized that DNA does not serve as a blueprint for life. And as such, mutations in DNA, contrary to Dawkins' theory, do not and indeed cannot determine an organism's basic biological form. As Dr. Jonathan Wells noted, biologists can mutate, and indeed have mutated, a fruit fly embryo in every possible way. And they have invariably observed only three possible outcomes, a normal fruit fly, a defective fruit fly, or a dead fruit fly. This revelation that DNA is not a blueprint was further emphasized in a February 2024 article in Nature by Dennis Noble, compellingly titled, It's time to admit that genes are not the blueprint for life. Besides the entire selfish gene concept now shown to be wrong, Dawkins is also now shown to be wrong in his belief that every gene or pseudogene in every living organism gives essentially the same phylogenetic tree. As Professor Richard Bugg states in his 2021 article titled, Obsolete Dawkinsian Evidence for Evolution, the layperson reading this or watching the Richard Dawkins video above is given the clear impression that every gene or pseudogene in every living organism gives essentially the same phylogenetic tree when analyzed with its homologs from other species. This is simply not true. If this were true, then phylogeny building in the genomic era would be a walk in the park. But as many of my readers will know from personal experience, it is not. If this were true, terms like horizontal gene transfer, incomplete lineage sorting, introgression, and molecular convergence would be rare curiosities in the genomic literature. But they are common. If this were true, commonly used phylogenetic software like Astral, Astrid, and Bucky, designed to deal with gene tree incongruence, would be seldom used. But they are used often. I hardly need to labor my point to the present audience. Dawkins' statements are simply wrong, gloriously and utterly wrong. To clearly illustrate just how gloriously and utterly wrong Dawkins is, in 2018 in a paper titled, The Dependency Graph of Life, Winston Ewart amassed a total of nine massive genetic databases. In every single one, without exception, the dependency graph, intelligent design model, surpassed the common descent model. And as biophysicist Cornelius Hunter explained in an article titled, New Paper by Winston Ewart, demonstrates superiority of design model. Darwin could never have even dreamt of a test on such a massive scale. Darwin also could never have dreamt of the sheer magnitude of the failure of his theory. Because you see, Ewart's results do not reveal two competitive models with one model edging out the other. We are not talking about a few decimal points difference. While 6.6 .6 bits would be considered to provide decisive evidence for the dependency graph, intelligent design model, the actual real biological data provide base factors of 10,064 on up to 515,450. In conclusion, Dawkins's selfish gene, once hailed as a groundbreaking concept and lauded as the most inspiring science books of all time, has been systematically debunked. 
The idea of DNA as a blueprint for life, the cornerstone of Dawkins' theory, has been conclusively disproven. Moreover, far from every gene or pseudogene in every living organism giving essentially the same phylogenetic tree, as Dawkins had erroneously claimed, it is now known that phylogenetic trees are severely incongruent, with the intelligent design model surpassing the common descent model by many orders of magnitude. In short, Dawkins' selfish gene, despite its acclaim, has failed to stand the test of time and scientific scrutiny, demonstrating that even the most celebrated scientific theories are not immune to being challenged and eventually overturned.